Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the SPTA Cordless Mini Detail Polisher. Now this one has actually been one of the most requested. I've been doing a lot of these uh, mini polisher reviews and people have been asking about this one a lot, so I'm happy to bring it to you guys here. I've got it, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Now if you're like me, you remember a more traditional style mini polisher from SPTA. I did too, I went on Amazon to go buy it didn't see it, all they had was this one. And as I'm filming this video, I went back to check a couple of specs and now the other one is on Amazon again. I don't know if it was just out of stock or what, but I have that one coming as well, so stay tuned for a review on that one. But back to this one, we're gonna do a full unboxing, all that kind of stuff, but just a quick kind of overview, guys. I think it's a cool machine, uh, but they definitely missed the mark on a few points. For the DIYer, it's okay. For the professional, it's definitely a no-go. It's just the battery is the issue for me. So stay tuned, guys, check it out, and uh, here we go. So right off the bat, I have this basic cardboard box here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it open, and just so you know, be careful when you're cutting this open. I wasn't aware of this, but they have the pads sitting right on top uh, as you cut into it. So you could potentially cut the pads as you open this thing, so just be careful. They do give you, uh, for their larger pad, they give you three of each, a yellow, a blue, and a green. Now I'm trying to, uh, the, the blue is definitely the lightest of the three, um, and I'm trying to decide really between the green and the yellow, it look, oh man, they're, they're pretty close, but I'm gonna say that the green looks a little bit more coarse. Uh, so I'm gonna say green is gonna be compounding, yellow is gonna be polishing, blue is gonna be finishing. I'll confirm that, I'm sure it says inside, so we'll look at that in a second. Now additionally, you do get smaller pads as well, and you get five of each color for those. Then you also get a stack of little wool and microfiber pads in different various sizes. I'm not gonna count all these out. It should be listed on the website or on, uh, you can buy this right on Amazon. I will link it in the description for you guys. But everything that's included in this, all the different pads will be listed there so you can see exactly what you're getting. But um, basically they give you a ridiculous amount of accessories that comes with this thing, which is nice. I, I appreciate it. Um, also, this is one of the better priced units uh, available out there. So I don't know. I, I, I think this one might be kind of hard to beat. Now this one is a different, style than the others and we will get into that um, here shortly so let me just anyways more attachments more attachments they actually have some kind that look like they would just go into a, like a, almost like a dremel tool but we'll see they're nice coned ones as well so you can really get into tight spots just the amount of accessories this thing comes with is excessive but they actually seem like pretty good quality i actually like them quite a bit now there is this microfiber one and then there's I guess these are both wool, but there's a short haired one and then a long haired one as well, again, in multiple sizes. So with all those accessories put to the side, let's go ahead and jump into the actual box now. Like I said, I opened up the cardboard box. This was at the bottom, all the pads are on top. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open. Okay, now guys, we're gonna be looking at this thing exactly at the same time together. I have not opened this. I have no idea what to expect out of this thing. I've seen the images of it on Amazon when I ordered it, but let's go ahead and pop it open. Really nice case. Like, very, very nice, not hard, hard case, but it's definitely a nice molded case. Uh, let's just get the box out of the way, and let's open this thing up. Okay, so let's see here. Hmm, not put together super nicely in here. I don't know if this one was a return. I don't think it was, um, but everything is kind of just tossed in here, so I'm not, as far as presentation goes, not the best. As far as accessories go, this thing is the winner with all these accessories that it comes with. It's crazy. There's even some, I mean, just never ending amount of accessories on this thing. We got our backing plates here. We have a couple of different little extension tools as well as here, here's one of the offsets. Uh, we also have a tr more traditional style charger here. This is not going to be a battery that you can remove, apparently. It's all built into the unit, so you just have your basic little charging block here that you can plug into it and plug into the machine. Now, runtime, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll test that out, but uh, as I said, guys, it's a completely different shape, so you can use it like this, like a, like a drill, and that's fine for pinpointing some little stuff, but uh, for anything more, like, I mean, if I'm using this on the A, a and B pillars or the plastic pieces on the, between the windows of the car, this isn't comfortable for me, but it does appear that you can compress this the, this side over here, compress that, turn it, and now you can use it, I mean, you can kind of get in like this, kind of hold it like a, more similar to a Dremel tool and use it that way, which I like, um, I don't know, I don't know. 
I mean, I guess you could use it like that and that's kind of like a polisher. I don't know. It's a little funky. I have to get used to it. But as far as the build quality goes, it seems nice. We have a power button here. I don't know if there's any juice in this thing yet. Let's see here. All right, turn the power on. It turns on right away. The little spindle head is spinning. Uh, let's see here. All right, so it looks like there's, we got three speeds. So the speed button's right here. You just toggle between the three speeds. You have low, medium, and high. And I'll just go ahead and turn that off so that we can actually dive into this thing a little bit more. So the cool thing is it looks like for these attachments, like I said, that look to be for a uh, Dremel kind of tool, you have this attachment here. So you can loosen this up, slide this guy in there. Uh, let me loosen it up some more. There we go. Slide that guy in there, tighten it down. But for the lock to tighten this down, you'll want to just line this up with this little gap here and then grab the tool, insert it in there. It should seat down, there we go. And then you can finish tightening that down. Boom, nice and tight. And then turn it back on. And you're working. Okay, so in order to change between this little rotary attachment that clips down um, on these type of attachments, uh, all you do is, again, you put the, the wrench on the little spindle in the back and then this part just backs off. So you can just remove it and that comes off. Now we just have the basic spindle, very, very simple. And then we can go ahead and take our uh, offset here and go ahead and plug this in. Now from here, now that we have the offset put on here, they actually have a little uh, uh, attachment piece that just lines up. You'll see there's a little, little lip to it. And then there's little position markers here. So all you do is just take it, slide it over and twist it on and it may take a little bit there we go it's on so uh it may take a couple little tries you just have to kind of give it a good twist and it pops on there and it's safe and good to go now you also do get an extension piece if you want to use that you can just plug that in um, again because this is the free spinning free spinning portion of the dual action oscill oscillation movement um, you would want to use the uh wrench here hold that down just to keep that part in place and then you can tighten this down. I'm not gonna do that, we don't need this right now, so I'm just gonna put on my backing plate. So for the backing plate, let's start off with the larger one. Uh, they do give you two backing plates for this. And one thing that is very nice, hey guys, is the gapping here isn't excessive. Uh, the Max Shine was a little bit wider of a gap once you change between the, the uh, movements. Um, this one sits a little flush, a little more flush, kind of similar to the Rupes. Um, again, it wasn't a problem for me with the Max Shine that it was a little bit bigger of a gap, but I do like it. It just, it just seems like it's precise and well-made. So now just to test out, we're gonna go ahead and throw one of the polishing, polishing pads on. All right, and they're okay. I mean, the, the backing, the Velcro isn't like super strong, so you kinda wanna compress the pad on it to get it to hold nicely. But there you go, guys, we're in business. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on. We can check the oscillation of it. Yeah, looks good. Looks very, very good. Again, slower speed. See how it bogs down. Yeah, completely bogs. Medium, it's okay, and high speed. You can definitely get it to bog down, but it's not bad. So what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this guy in, uh, see how long it takes to charge, see if there's any indicators that tells us where the charge is at. Um, and then I'm gonna just going to go ahead and turn it on similar to what I did with the, uh, the little chemo polisher. Similar to that, I'm just gonna turn it on, let the thing run and see how long it lasts. Okay guys, so I just plugged in the little charging block, have my uh, cable plugged into that, and then right on the bottom here, you'll see the little attachment point. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And there we go, there's a little indicator right there. I wasn't sure if it was gonna have one, but as it's flashing, I'm assuming once it's full charged, it's just, it'll stop flashing and just hold the light on. So we'll let that sit, we'll come back and check on it in a little bit. And I'm actually gonna keep a pretty close eye on it. Again, I don't know how much charge there was right out of the box, it did turn on, but I am interested to see how long it takes to get to the full power. Okay guys, so that is the little SPTA mini polisher. Um, here are the key takeaways of this thing, the positives on this unit. Cool little unit. I like the fact that you're able to use it like a traditional polisher. I don't really, this little head piece back here is a little bit weird for me, but you get used to it. The fact that you can press the button and pivot it up to 90 degrees is cool. You can kind of get in a little more precise. I don't know. It's maybe gimmicky. I didn't use it personally, but I think it's cool and may actually have a use case down the road. But for me, um, not 
entirely necessary for sure. Now, again, the power button on the, is on the back and then to change your speeds, it's right here. When you turn this thing on and off, if you leave it on at full speed and turn it off, you turn it back on, it's gonna be full speed again. It doesn't start at a slower speed. It's Whatever you left it at is what it's gonna be at. So just be careful on that. Make sure to slow it down before you do uh, anything. You don't wanna just fling all your product everywhere. So just be careful with that. I would much rather prefer if there was a, a, a spinning dial, but it is just a little button that changes between three different speeds. One cool thing is when you turn it on, you just long press it, is this little light comes on. So you, I mean, I get what they're doing, um, in the idea of trying to give you some visibility, but that's underneath, I, I mean, it's, it's not great. It's not super visible for where you're actually working and it's not super bright either. Uh, moving right along, guys, the accessories are fantastic that it comes with. However, the biggest downfall for this thing, the reason I don't like it is it took me about an hour, a little over an hour to charge the battery. It's an internal battery. You plug it in using a little uh, charging block and plug it into here. There's no way to swap batteries to have backups. So for me as a professional, for sure, no go, mainly because of that reason. Um, I just don't have any confidence of it lasting through the job and if it dies then I can't wait another hour plus for it to charge. Right? I need to be able to swap out the battery and keep going. So for me this is a no-go. For the DIYer I think it's a cool little unit um, but I think there's better options out there. This one's hundred right around 150 bucks. The Max Shine one is the one I would go with at that at that rate. It's 220 or something like that but if you use my discount code which is I'm Josh V15 gives you 15% off it brings it to 187. So you're within $37 and uh, I think that's a big, big win over, over this one for sure. Another one of the talking points about this is on Amazon, it only currently has eight reviews and it's only like three and a half stars and it's because uh, I, I saw some of the reviews, it died pretty quickly on people. Uh, they only used it a few times and then it died. I don't know, you know, maybe they has got a bad unit, but uh, anything, it seems like the company does take care of them, except they're sending out replacement parts from China. So again, you're just gonna be waiting a long time to get your replacement parts. So again, not ideal at all. With MacShine, they have their US headquarters right here in Brea. It's like Orange County, California. Um, Rupes, obviously they have factory centers here. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. If you're looking for something that's gonna last a long time, this is not the one I would go with. I do think it's a cool little tool, but again, not the one I would go with. I reviewed the Rupes and the Max Shine uh, already. I'll link those in the description below for you guys so you can check those out. But that's it, guys. Um, as far as I did say, I was gonna test the runtime on this, but there's so much vibration and you don't feel the vibration while you're using it, but I try and turn it on and then set it down and it's just walking all over the place because there's too much vibration for it. So um, I'm not gonna test it. It's just even with, even if it lasts, you know, I don't know, even though if it lasts 30 minutes without load, when you have load, it's gonna last less because uh, you're putting more tension on that on the motor essentially. Um, and again, I just don't have the confidence to recommend this, honestly. A little bit of a bummer because I had high hopes for this thing, um, but you know, I think it does the job that it's meant to do. It's just not, definitely not for a professional. So that's it guys. I hope that video helps you. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell. We'll see you on the next one.